Hello everyone, welcome back. So this time we're gonna be going over face-centered cubic structures. Okay, face-centered cubic, we had the simple cubic that made sense to you. Now we had that body-centered cubic, we had a dot directly in the middle. So face-centered cubic, well, it's not as easy to see just by looking at this one, but it makes a lot more sense when you look at this one. Well, body-centered cubic had a, um, a piece in the body. This one right here, we have one that is centered in the face okay it is centered in the face and this is actually the most dense way of packing these spheres it's the densest way to pack these spheres and it works very very well so we looked at it right here okay you might be like well, how does this look the best way to think about it is like five four five so you have five balls like so then on top of those, you stack balls everywhere you see a gap. So let me change colors real quick. And we go one, two, three, four. And then we put balls wherever we have a gap. And come back to it again. Back to red. And we would just overlap again. So it's an A, B, A, B pattern. Five balls and four balls and five balls and four balls and five balls and four balls. And four balls. Now, in all honesty, each row is the same because you know, if I were to draw some more lines, you would see that it just kind of offset. Don't choose the right color, but right here, you can see that it would be still be like these kind of X shape. It just depends on what part I start at. And if you just look at this visually, you'll see that there's a lot, it at least seems that there's a lot less of a gap there. Now, this is in a lot of different materials. Gold, platinum, nickel, lead, aluminum, copper. Wait, sorry, I got silver mixed up. This is silver. This is gold. It has a coordination number of 12. Okay, now, where are all those 12 atoms coming from? You're like, oh, I'm not sure if I see that. So let's look at it right here. If I look at this atom in particular, you can see that it's touching one, two, There'll be a third one over here and a fourth one on the bottom, atoms. It's also touching one, two, three, four atoms there, so that's up to eight. And then what you see here is repeated, it's just off the stage. We can't, we can't necessarily see it, but it repeats itself, and so there'll be four more atoms that it touches. So that's how I get its coordination number of 12. Now, how many atoms do we have in our unit cell? Well, there are four. We have six faces, and each of those holds half an atom, if we're doing this little cube. We have eight corners, which each of those holding an eighth of an atom. So, six times a half is three, plus eight times an eighth, which is one, so that would be equal to four. Now, please remember that this, you know, obviously we don't see these strange little boxes inside of our molecules or our metals. What we do see, though, is these repeating structures. And all this unit cell is, is the smallest repeating structure within my cell. And they're also like, well, couldn't I have done it any other way? Like, why don't I have a single whole atom? Why can't I do a whole atom in here? The reason we do it this way is just because this shows us the entire, like all the features. I could technically move it over a little bit and you know, have, maybe have this atom right here be whole, but it wouldn't explain exactly how it is. Even though it would be a repeating structure, it doesn't give you a, as good a view in one view. And so this is typically how it's done. And this also looks a lot like our simple cubic and our body center cubic, so it just, there's a lot of symmetry there. Okay, now what is the atomic packing factor for this face center cubic structure? Well, I can go ahead and show you that it's 0 0.74. But how do we get that? Well, geometry. Figure it out through geometry. We know there's eight atoms, that's one thing. Okay, I said eight atoms. What am I doing here? There are four atoms. Woo! There are eight corners. My goodness, what am I talking about? We also know that this side length is always determined to be A. So we need to get our radius in terms of A. So, well, how are we going to do that? Well, it's not too terrible. First, we look at our close packed direction. That's where the atoms are touching each other directly. So if you look at this line right here, these atoms are touching right there. These atoms are touching right here. This is my close pack direction. 
I have no room to move without hitting another atom in that direction. I am touching an atom along that direction. So, okay. We know what the height is, it's A. We know what the basis is A. So we can figure out the length of this line. That would simply be, well, A squared plus A squared is equal to C squared. Okay, and that's what I'm trying to solve for. This is C. 2A squared is equal to C squared, and I take a square root of it, and I get A square root of 2 is equal to C. So that's where that length comes from. Now we also know that that is four radiuses. We have one radius right here. I'll go for this direction. One plus two plus one. So one, two, one makes four radiuses. And therefore we can get our radius in terms of A. And we're doing this because we know what the volume of a sphere is. It's four thirds pi r cubed. And so we're going to plug in now, instead of having R in there, we're going to put our, um, put it in terms of A. So we do that. Four atoms, four thirds pi, that's R cubed, over A cubed, because that's just the volume of the cube. When we do all this out, well, it comes out to be 0.74, and this is the maximum achievable atomic packing factor. The maximum achievable atomic packing factor. Nothing can be better than that. There is one other structure that has the same, just um, slightly, you know, slightly different orientation, but the same atomic packing factor. Okay, now this is going along with that whole stacking sequence, the whole stacking sequence. And I did misspeak earlier when I said it was A, B, A, B. It's, it's very similar to that, but not quite. Okay, it has an A, B, C stacking sequence. A, B, C, stacking sequence. And this is all going to depend on what direction you are looking at when you're doing the atoms. Um, when I'm looking at it from the view that you actually draw the um, unit cell from, then it's in more of an A, B, A, B. Um, but when you're looking at it from this direction, it's different. So in this plane, you see we're looking at it more or less than a diagonal right now. And we have all these atoms packed here. This is the first row. And then wherever we see a gap, we put another atom. So we're going to put a B atom here and here, here, over all those gaps. Every single one is going to get a B atom. And then we keep on going from there. Okay, I'm sorry again. Not every single one, but all the ones where it will actually fit get a B atom. There we go. Let's actually draw a little bit more nicely. And then any spot that has not been covered yet, well, that's the third row. And the C atoms will cover that. So you can see that all these little gaps you're able to see will have been covered by atoms after three, um, three planes, and then it resets. So there's the B atoms, and then finally there's the C atoms. It kind of makes sense. This would be how you would um, how you would stack a bunch of balls if the bottom balls would not move. And here you can see what I mean by it being three rows if you're looking at this one. So our first row right here, the A one, is that diagonal one. And then we have B, which is in the opposite triangle. And then we have C here, which you can't see the full thing, but it would be very similar in shape. Now, if you're wondering why we chose these directions, it's because these are the most closely packed planes. All the atoms touch in these planes. All those guys are touching. Those three are touching, those three are touching. And the other planes, the one where if you're going from the top to the bottom, well, if you look at that one, these two atoms aren't touching. These two atoms aren't touching. So it's not as closely packed, and that's why we don't use that in our stacking sequence. Okay. The next thing we're going to hit on is the hexagonal close-packed structure. This is terrifying. I just want to go ahead and mention it right now. This is terrifying. It has the same coordination number, same exact coordination number, which is 0.74. Um, but it has an ABA stacking sequence. You can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's why it's hexagonal. And the seventh one in the middle. And we have the exact same thing at the bottom. And then we have just a triangular set in the middle. 
We will not do many problems with this. There will be a few, though, working with the hexagonal close packed structure. But I won't do this to you too much. Um, and so that is it for this day. So I hope this helps you with the face centered um, cubic structure and the hexagonal close packed structure. I promise you we'll do some example problems with the hexagonal close packed at some point, so it'll give you a better idea of it. Um, but be sure that you understand the face centered cubic. That one will be coming back quite a lot. Well, hope this helps you. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.